And good morning, everyone. I'm Darren Perrin. Right now on You Can Quote Me, the Burlington mayoral debate. Incumbent Democrat Murrow Weinberger is running for re-election, seeking a fourth term. He's being challenged by City Council President Progressive Max Tracy and Independent Councilor Ali Jang. I'll pose questions to all three on some of the same topics and direct specific questions to individual candidates. They will get 30 seconds to one minute to answer and 30 seconds for rebuttals if a candidate calls them out specifically. Each candidate will get one minute at the end of the debate to make their case to Burlington voters. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Let's begin with the pandemic. What needs to be done to keep case counts down in the city? What's working now? Where could the city improve? Especially now that a COVID variant has been detected in wastewater. Murrow Weinberger, one minute. Well, thank you, Darren. Thanks for hosting this debate to CAX. Um, glad we're starting with this question and that this is the issue in front of the city right now. This is the top priority until we get to a point where all of our vulnerable populations are, are vaccinated, which we're getting closer to. Uh, really, we're at the point where this is in the hands of the community. We launched this wastewater testing program so that we would know uh, when there were changes like this variant uh, that we did detect last week. I'm really urging everyone to just double down on all of the uh, efforts that we know work and that have succeeded in keeping Burlington one of the safest cities in the country over the last 10 months. We just all got to hold together for what is probably just only a matter of weeks now until we get to the point where everyone who is really vulnerable to this virus is, is vaccinated. The city will keep doing its part. I'll, you know, As long as I'm in this position, I'll keep going out there and giving people updates regularly. The city team continues to fo function on this as a top priority. And, Thank you. Uh, so while I'm in office. Thank you. Ali Zhang, same question, one minute. <clears throat> Yes, um, thank you again for having us. And I think it is important for the city of Burlington to uh, expand our efforts in calling uh, municipal, the other municipalities such as uh, Winneski, South Burlington, and collectively we can uh, do a much greater and better work. And also to continue to urge our residents to be mindful uh, that this virus is here, the variant is right here, and to take extra precaution, you know. And um, I think, you know, to expand also on the vaccination, currently they are happening. Uh, vulnerable population age 70 are starting to get their vaccination. And we just educate and also for Vermonters to show each other, uh, show up for each other uh, for the betterment of every single person. Yes. Thank you. Max Tracy, your take on the city's COVID fight. One minute. Well, thanks for the question and thanks for having us. I just want to acknowledge um, those who've been lost to the pandemic. I know a lot, but many folks have lost uh, family and friends to this and are continuing to really suffer uh, under the, the weight of this pandemic. And so I think it's important um, that we continue to prioritize and, and respect the science behind this and coordinate closely with state officials uh, in order to make sure that um, we are doing everything we can to contain it. I think that it's the city's role to, to not let up on this uh, at all at this point. I think we need to continue our efforts um, to uh, maintain social distance, uh, to distribute masks, to make sure that folks are uh, have readily uh, have those readily accessible. Uh, and then also just make sure that we're providing direct uh, mutual aid support to folks um, who are in need, uh, specifically around their basic needs uh, in this in this particular moment, because we know that people um, have a variety of needs that have um, that continue to need to be met in the context of the pandemic. So we need to continue to work with, with mutual aid organizations on that. Thank you. Some progress on Burlington's big dig, if you will, the long stalled city place project, a settlement with the developers calls for reconnecting St. Paul and Pine Streets. But we still have a huge hole in the middle of downtown. What went wrong here and what's the fix? Max Tracy. 
Well, I think that we uh, really d did not do enough um, economic due diligence on this project. I think it was a, a project that was out of scale with Burlington. That's something that I said uh, from the very beginning. And I think that that was a big reason as to why the project failed. I think that going forward, we need to prioritize a project that um, brings good union jobs to, to our city and that uh, makes sure that we have a, a project that ends up being in scale with Burlington and that is also accessible to Burlingtonians across the socioeconomic spectrum so that this it's really truly uh, you know something that that folks across our city are able to to participate in uh, and use and enjoy thank you Merle Weinberger one minute well what went wrong is that the developers started and then failed to live up to the agreement and continue construction as they had committed to we've now held them accountable for that we went to court and have secured through the settlement that I brought to the city council millions of dollars of benefits for taxpayers uh, by doing that. Um, uh, what needs to happen now is uh, the council needs to uh, approve this settlement as we are having this conversation. It's uh, the vote is, is before them and I uh, certainly hope my opponents in this race will be supporting the settlement and um, then we'll move forward and we will achieve this vision that Burlingtonians have long wanted. You know, it's important to remember, this isn't just a problem for the last three years. There's been a hole in the heart of the downtown since the 1960s when we tore down this swath of uh, uh, the, the center of the city. And this is now because we have taken this on head on, we are on the cusp of finally getting homes and jobs and reconnected streets here once again. Thank you. Ali Jang, what would yep. you do about City Place and who do you blame for the delayed project? Yeah, I um, mean, I think what went wrong is the fact that we demolished the mall that existed without having a security in terms of the financing in place. And second time also, we allowed the developers to pour concrete by altering the uh, agreement. Uh, without, again, a, uh, a substantial amount of clarity around the finances in place, right? And the way forward is very, uh, is uh, well, we have to learn from this mistake. And basically is we have to be transparent again to the voters of this great city and also to also include them in the process, as well as making sure that union jobs, this uh, this development will definitely have union jobs and also will help a lot of vulnerable people um, to access some educational programs, some jobs, uh, etc. I mean, I welcome this developer, this development in this community, and I am now very hopeful that it is in the hand of local developers that we definitely Th respect. Thank you. Calls for police reform led to protesters occupying Battery Park and ultimately cuts to the police force. The new chief worries public safety is in jeopardy with too few officers. Do you think the reduced staffing cap of 74 officers puts the public in danger? Ali Zhang. Yes, um, I do think that it is imperative for all Burlingtonians to have a say in this issue. And I tried over and over to make sure that Burlingtonians have a say. I cannot agree reducing or uh, augmenting the cap without an input from the people and also without a lengthy process that is clear and transparent, right? And I am um, hopeful that as we move forward and as a next mayor, a comprehensive plan around our public safety need to be looked at. And it's not only about the police itself. It is also about non-sworn police officers that we need to have in our department in responding to a couple of issues uh, that are not criminal, right? And that's the only way forward. Inclusion, uh, making sure that people have a say in this process, and also that we hold ourselves accountable around uh, leading this great city of Burlington. And everyone should be safe here. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Max, Tracy, you've made it clear you support the staffing cap. So what makes you sure that public safety won't be put at risk? One minute. We did um, some in-depth analysis of the, the call volumes and saw that call volume has, has dropped substantially um, in recent years and that we are also um, over resource, you know, we have a, a significant amount more, uh, we had a significant amount more of uh, officers more than other comparable cities. And so that was the, the analysis that, that led us to try a different approach. In addition to that, we also have a system that currently does not provide public safety for all and has um, some negative um, 
issue, some negative implications for uh, people of color in particular, specifically the disproportionate amount of traffic stops and disproportionate amount of use of force against black people in our community. And so we need real community oversight. And we also need to continue the work to transform public safety and build out social service positions as well as community support officer positions that will be able to create additional capacity, which is what we did last week and what I continue to support as an approach going forward. Thank you. Murrow Weinberger, you don't support the staffing cap. Why and what about your opponent's idea of non-sworn officers in support roles? Darren, thanks. This is an issue where the differences in this election, the differences between me and my opponent could not be more stark. Let's be really clear about it. I support a well-resourced professional police department just like we have had a tripartisan consensus for four decades. It is really stunning, uh, as we've just heard, that my opponents, who are city councilors in this race, do not agree. Um, the cut that was made last summer, led by uh, council, Councilor Tracy, reduced, eliminated 30% of the officer positions without a plan in place for how we would continue to respond to the 30,000 incidents a year that Burlingtonians rightly expect us to respond to. There is still no plan in place, and yet just last week when I went to the council with another compromise that would have allowed us to find a way through that did include these non-officer positions, that is part of part of my plan. Once again, uh, my council opponents um, who are on this, uh, in this debate voted against it. This, if I am reelected, I will continue to push and make sure we have the resources to keep. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Murra Weinberger, trust and transparency have become issues in this race. Opponents point to the social media scandal at the Burlington Police Department, your relationship with the former chief, and that you both challenged the state's medical examiner over a homicide ruling involving an officer who punched a man. Are you trustworthy? Are you transparent? Thanks, Darren. So, listen, I, I've been mayor now for nine years and I think I've built a long record of showing judgment and, and really being focused on on ensuring public trust. I came into office um, uh, at a time when that was clearly broken and we've restored that through accessibility, through transparency and through uh, through making substantial progress on restoring our finances, on uh, rebuilding the waterfront, on uh, on, on, on public safety. We have made more reforms since 2015 to the way we do policing than just about any city in the country. So um, uh, I, uh, my record is out for, for all Burlingtonians. What I hear um, when I'm talking to voters today, Darren, is, is not about these questions from incidents a couple years ago. It's about what we were just talking about, keeping Burlington safe going forward. And again, there, the difference between me and my opponents couldn't be more dramatic. Thank you. Max Tracy, some are critical of your candidacy, calling you an activist who supports ideas like rent control, a luxury real estate tax, or taxing people who make more than 125000 even more. And they point to financial failures under the last progressive administration. How do you respond? Well, I think that we see crises in our city that are intersecting and uh, that have not, uh, where we have not seen nearly enough progress. Housing being one of those areas where we've seen the market-driven approach of the, the current administration has not done nearly enough to, to bring down rents in our city. And so I think every strategy should be on the table to create more affordability for people who are really struggling to, to, to to pay their bills at this point. I hear that so much um, from the voters that I'm talking to is that they're just spending way too much of their income on rent and that that um, prevents them from affording other basic necessities and certainly prevents them from thinking about saving up to uh, purchase a home someday. So that has real implications now and down the line. And so I think we need to really um, take bold uh, take bold steps to address this, this housing uh, crisis that our community faces uh, and make sure that we're doing everything we can to to ensure that everybody um, is able to, to afford their, their cost of living. And on the tax issue. All right, is that my time up? <laughs> it is now. I guess we'll yeah, get to sorry. that at a different time. Ali Jang, let's uh, talk about your experience. You've been on the city council for about four years, but some question whether you have the experience to run a city in all of the departments, do you? 
Of course I do. And I think I've been uh, working on this to become the next mayor of Wellington since I moved here. And again, cities are not run by people. Cities are run by a council and also the administration. And I am able to create an, a great and wonderful team of people that will definitely support me and work with me uh, in creating a functional city council and getting things done, right? I was born ready and I'm looking for the voters of Wellington to give me the opportunity to lead this great city to become the best small city in North America. Thank you, and thank Darren, you all. Can't Darren, I'd like to respond on that housing uh, point, if I could, very quickly. Um, this administration uh, has been as committed to permanently affordable housing as, as the city ever has been. I put my record up in terms of creating permanently affordable against Mayor Sanders, Mayor Clavel. What I do believe is that if we're serious about making housing a human right, we need to build more homes for people of all backgrounds. We've built more than 1,300 homes over the last nine years. I, I believe Councillor Tracy's proposals would take us backwards, not forwards, and make us less affordable as a community. Okay. Not Th thank you. I'm going to give uh, Max Tracy 30 seconds to respond to that as well. <clears throat> Yeah, so I think that again, as I said before, that that we just have not seen nearly enough progress to bring affordability um, to uh, enough people in our community, and that um, we need to put every every potential strategy on the table and make sure that we're doing everything we can to to bring costs into line with wages, because that's the real issue here, is that costs of housing in particular have far outpaced wages, causing folks to spend beyond the thirty percent that's considered reasonable, uh, and 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 uh, and. For, for most folks to spend on housing. And so I think that it Thank makes you. sense for us to explore Thank and, and implement these strategies. And I'm just giving that 30 seconds again because there was no actual call out. So I thought it would be fair that way. Candidates stay right there. We'll take a quick break and continue the conversation right after this. Now more than ever, you need an all wheel drive Toyota. Well, you can save lots of cash on one at our Washington's Birthday Savings Event, and that includes our hybrid electric all wheel drive models. Get an all wheel drive Sienna Hybrid with $500 bonus cash, plus 1.9 for 60, or lease an all wheel drive Highlander XLE gas model for $2.99 a month. Each includes Toyota Safety Sense and more. Save cash before the event ends March 1st. Your New England Toyota dealer, your all wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. Can I get a hamburger? Look at plain. Extra ketchup, but no pickles. Actually pickles. One vanilla coke. Hot chocolate. Your largest coffee. I'm gonna need like... Ten egg McMuffins, please. This order is gonna be long. One hamburger Happy Meal. Make that two. Make that three. No, no, no. A Sprite, and what else? Fries all around! Extra ketchup. I mean chicken. Ten cheese McNuggets. You've been loyal. We want to reward that. Introducing my McDonald's rewards. Now every order earns points redeemable for free McDonald's. Ready, set, go. Live big in the larger-than-life SUVs from GMC. The GMC Acadia, Terrain, and all-new Yukon. Current eligible non-GM owners can get this low-mileage lease on this all-wheel drive Acadia SLE for around $199 per month. We are professional grade GMC. Knowing Hannaford works with their suppliers for low prices is super comforting. Getting great deals just relaxes me. And way more than that aromatherapy candle my sister-in-law gave me. What's misty moon dust even supposed to smell like? Now through March 6th, get 12-ounce packages of Hannaford Frozen Haddock Filets for $4.99 each. Select varieties of Campbell's Chunky Soup for $1.79 each. And tender green asparagus for $1.49 a pound. Only at Hannaford Supermarkets. And welcome back, everyone. You are watching the Burlington mayoral debate on Channel 3's You Can Quote Me. Let's talk about affordability now. We're going to continue on this topic. Quite simply, it's expensive to live in Burlington. How will you make the city more affordable? I'm looking for specifics. Murrow Weinberger, one minute. Uh, thanks, Darren. I'm glad to keep talking about this. This is one of the largest issues. Um, and, you know, again, we're going to continue the strategies that are starting to work by building more than 1,300 homes for people of all incomes. We have doubled the vacancy rate and we have stabilized rents. They have been, they have been growing slower than the rate of inflation in recent years. Uh, we do that by creating housing opportunity. Um, I do think there's, first of all, we, we need the council to finish 
uh, implementing the recommendations that came out of the 2019 Mayor's Housing Summit. There are two important initiatives that have not yet been completed by the council. Going forward from there, I'm very interested in working with the AARP on something called creating missing middle uh, opportunities, which would create many new um, places for homes within all parts of the city. And when we do that, not only will we make ourselves more affordable, we'll make real progress on, on racial justice and inclusion by creating more opportunities for people to stay here and, and become Thank part you. of this community and other progress. Thank you. Ali Zhang, same question, one minute. Yes, um, so I believe that I'm the only city uh, candidate in this race talking specifically about affordability. And if you go to my website, alijang.com, you will see a policy idea that I call the creation of the Office of Community Wealth Building. Basically, I think it is about uh, time that uh, Burlingtonians can start to build wealth. And also I'm talking about how do we support these taxpayers by aligning the collaboration between the Burlington School District and also the city of Burlington, right? This race and my candidacy is all about making sure that people get better off under my administration. Thank you. Thank you. Max Tracy, how will you make Burlington more affordable and are taxes part of the plan? One minute. Yeah, so we absolutely have to do more on housing as, I've, as we've been talking about in this, this debate. Uh, rent stabilization policies will, will bring that, those rents more in line with uh, real wages that people are earning and make it more, more, more affordable for people to afford their housing costs. On the, the taxation side, we certainly need, we certainly have a lot of work to do to reform um, our, our tax system in particular. We know that our educational tax system is not fair to Burlington and that it needs significant work. That's been a huge driver of, of, of increases and we know that we're not properly um, resourced for the diverse learning needs of our community. So that has to be part of it. On the business side, I support a strategy of expanding the land trust model, as well as creating uh, incubator spaces for businesses, uh, as well as cooperative ownership models, because that can really create um, easier entry points for, for, for businesses to, to get started and, and really continue to thrive and build themselves up. Thank you. You all have been critical of each other and now comes maybe the hardest question of all. What do you admire about the other candidates? Something they do well. For this, you're gonna get 30 seconds. Max Tracy, we'll start with you. Um, well, you know, I, I, I really have appreciated uh, Moreau's stance on and the work that we've done together around um, opiates and addressing um, the, the, the impact that they're having on our community. I also respect um, his work on, on transportation and the collaboration there. Um, with Councillor Jang, I've just really appreciated um, the um, the collaboration that we've had um, as as fellow counselors, um, I you know on on a number of different fronts, I, I appreciate also in this race um, the, his you. emphasis on unity and transparency. Thank you, Murrow Weinberger. Thanks, Darren. Um, listen, Max and I have served together now for for nine years. We were elected on the same day, and uh, I know him to be uh, someone who's very passionate and. Uh, committed to uh, to what he believes in, and, and that's admirable. Um, similarly, Councillor Jang uh, has had a, a, an outstanding um, effort at getting getting elected as one of our first um, uh, immigrant uh, recent immigrant uh, councillors. Um, something very few people can do, and I appreciate working Thank together with him on racial justice. Thank you, Ali Jang. Something you admire about your opponents. Yes, um, for Mira Weinberger, I mean, I think we have done a great work together around the race, equity, inclusion, and belonging, you know, for the city of Burlington. And I always valued my, my uh, uh, Councillor Tracy's, you know, uh, uh, work around just speaking up on issues. Um, I think I value both of them, their leadership styles. Thank you. Well, it's now time for closing statements before the debate. The candidates picked numbers, and that determined who goes first. Ali Jang, one minute. Well, perfect. Um, thank you again. And uh, I believe that, you know, voters of Burlington are tired, and also they need to change. And I don't want that same change to be um, electing one of these two opponents. I think the change should be radical. The change should be meaningful. And in front of you, you have a great, wonderful community uh, member who is, you know, who loved the city and who have worked all of his career uh, to make Burlington better. And as a city councillor, a member of Board of Finance, 
I want to continue for, um, you know, leading this city to be the best it can be, right? 13 years ago, I came here not speaking the language, and right now I'm in front of you uh, seeking for your vote, and uh, I believe that you will give me the opportunity to lead this city uh, and unite the city council. We are very dysfunctional right now, and uh, again, I'm running around transparency, unity, and action. Thank you. Thank you. Max Tracy, one minute. Well, thanks again for hosting us. You know, our community has been really hard hit and everyday people are struggling as rent, property taxes, childcare costs, and the basic expenses of living continue to go up and wages do not. We deserve better than the status quo. And as mayor, I'll end the trend of working people, people living on fixed incomes and families being priced out of Burlington. Transform public safety to work for all of us and build economic resilience to weather this storm and those to come. I'm asking for your vote because the change we need to uplift all can't wait. More of the same is not getting us where we need to be, and in fact, is leaving many behind. I have nearly a decade of principal leadership as a city councilor and as council president, and am prepared to work with our community to build a brighter future for all. You can learn more and get involved at maxformayorbtv.com. Thank you so much for your support, and I look forward to record turnout on and before town meeting day, which is March 2nd this year. Thank you. Murrow Weinberger, one minute. Well, thank you, Darren and, and WCAX for bringing us together for this event. I really look forward to the day when we can have events like this back in the studio. Better times are coming soon, but in, until then, we are gonna continue to grapple with four simultaneous crises, the pandemic, a deep recession, a long overdue reckoning with racial justice and a deepening climate emergency. Clearly, these are times that demand proven leadership, this is no time for a mayor without management experience to be learning on the job. This high stakes election is now in your hands. The ballots have all been sent out. And as you fill out your ballot in the, in the days to come, um, I hope you know that I will bring the same kind of relentless energy and innovation that I've brought to fighting the pandemic to all of our other major crises. And the one other major thing I want you to know is that I will make sure that Burlington continues to have the resources it needs for public safety. Thank you. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you on March 2nd. Thank you, candidates. Thank you all. And thank you all for watching. Don't forget to vote. I'm Darren Perrin. Take care. We'll see you soon. Morning. I'm Melissa Borden. Coming up, your top local headlines from heroin arrest to larceny. Plus, we're diving into keeping Vermont's history standing just one building at a time. Join us at 8. Now more than ever, you need an all-wheel drive Toyota. Well, you can save lots of cash on one at our Washington's Birthday Savings Event. And that includes our hybrid electric all-wheel drive models. Get an all-wheel drive Sienna Hybrid with $500 bonus cash, plus $1.9 for $60. Or lease an all-wheel drive Highlander XLE gas model for $2.99 a month. Each includes Toyota Safety Sense and more. Save cash before the event ends March 1st. Your New England Toyota dealer. Your all-wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places.